Hello everyone, this is Vika and welcome back to the channel. This is the second video of Unity Beginner Tutorial series and in the first video tutorial we talk about how to create a play object and move it using a script. In today's video we talk about how to spawn objects, how to move them using a script, how to make prefabs and how to destroy game objects. So without further ado, let's go and make our game. Welcome back guys, today we are going to spawn obstacles using a script and first of all we should create a prefab in order to spawn obstacles using a script. So what I am going to do first is right click, go to create and create an empty folder and name it as prefabs. Then I go inside the folder and drag and drop this obstacle object into the prefabs folder and it will be automatically converted into a prefab. Then you can see this obstacle object becomes blue color which means that it is converted into a prefab. Then I no more need to copy and paste the obstacle objects. I can simply drag and drop into the hierarchy from the assets section. And now let's go and do this spawning process by a script. First I delete these prefabs from the hierarchy and I don't need to worry because I already have the prefab in my assets. Here I'll show it by dragging it to the hierarchy and it appears in the scene. First I'll create an empty game object and name it as prefab spawner. Now I want to attach a script to the game object. I go to the inspector and click on add component and type your script name. In this case it is prefab spawner and click on new script and Again click on create and add. Then I drag this script into the scripts folder. Here we can still see the attach script in the player or spawner game object even the script location is changed. Then double click and open the script in the visual studio. Now we open the script. Let's spawn a single obstacle prefab. First make a reference. For that. I create a public game object variable and name it as obstacle pre sorry prefab obstacle. Now I want to spawn this obstacle in the middle of the screen here. For that purpose, we use instantiate function. In Unity manual, we can see the method description and parameters. Here for instantiate, first we have to give the prefab, then the position, and after the rotation. So let's go and type instantiate, then prefab name, then the position, right. Since this is used in 2D space, I type vector and give 0, 0 position to instantiate. Lastly, I type quaternion.identity for the rotation. Then I click on prefab or spawner object and here we can see prefab obstacle is empty. Then I drag and drop the obstacle prefab into the location. Now it has a reference and let's play. Now you can see the obstacle is spawned in the middle of the screen. Right. Now let's try to spawn more objects. For that, go to the scripts and duplicate this line and change the x coordinates and let's play again. Now we can see two obstacles in the screen as we expected. Now let's describe the player movement because we don't need it anymore and we are going to move obstacle instead and make it an illusion. So I comment the code line which is related to the player movement. Also I need to move my player to the middle so tweak this x value and move it to the middle. Our task is to move obstacle from right to left after spawning. For that, I attach another script to the obstacle prefab since movement is a behavior of the obstacle. Then I click and add a script to the obstacle and name it as obstacle move. Also move it to the script folder and open it in Visual Studio. Then I copy the script from the player scene it was previously moving. First. I get the rigid body from the player and paste it to the obstacle mode script. Then I copy this part as well. 
then I add velocity to the spawn object. Then let's give a velocity to the obstacles. For that, I type player rigid body 2d dot velocity equals new vector 2. Here we are not going to move this in y direction and only in x direction. For x direction, I create a variable for x direction speed. Here I create float speed equals 5. Let's save this and go back to Unity and open the prefab. In the script, we can't see the speed variable in the inspector window. The reason is the variable is variable's access modifier is private. So I make it public and reopen in the Unity. Then we can see the speed variable in the inspector window. Actually, we don't need to make this variable public in order to appear in the inspector window. So let's remove the public access modifier and add serialize field in front of the variable and let's go back and to Unity and check it is appeared in the inspector window. Yes, we can see it in our in the Unity editor. So let's go back to the visual studio and change the speed direction. Also, we need to add rigid body to D to add speed to the obstacles. So let's search for rigid body 2D and add it. Then I move up in the inspector window because I normally prefer scripts to be at the bottom of the inspector. And let's play. Uh, it has fallen, so let's go to the rigid body 2D and make it kinematic instead of dynamic. Obstacle have mode, but I feel that the speed is too much, so I change the speed in. Uh, and the, and finally, I came up with a speed value of 1.5. So let's go back to the player spawner script and here I want to spawn obstacles in a different X position. I change X position to minus 5 and uh, no, uh, to plus 5 position and uh, save it. And uh, let's go to the unity and play the game and it has spawned in the right position as I expected. Again, come back to the player spawner script and I want to spawn obstacles in every one second at positive Y position. Before that, let's move the player spawn code from the start to update function. Let's save and play the game as an experiment. Here you can see here a lot of object is spawned at each frame. Let's come back to the player spawn script and change the code to spawn after every one second. For that, I want to add wait function. So I type start core routine and let's give a function name. Let's say uh, spawn obstacle. Then implement the function. Let's type enumerator spawn obstacle and parentheses. Inside the function, let's type wait for seconds function yield return wait for seconds and I set it as float variable. Here I add the float variable name wait for seconds and let's declare it on the top of the class. Now it can be accessed from the unity editor. Now I cut and paste instantiate method from the update to the spawn object function. Let's go and play see what will happen. Oops, uh, uh, here what, what is happening is once the game runs and after one second the first obstacle is spawned and after each update the obstacles are spawned. That's not what I wanted. Okay, I sorted out the issue. The issue was every update the spawn obstacle function is called after one second. So my solution is to make a custom loop. So let's move the spawn obstacle function to start function and uh, recall this function just after, after the wait function. When I was testing, I changed this wait for second part to wait for second real time. Now I change it back to the previous part. Let's go back to the Unity editor and hit on play. Now it's working correctly. But here we need to fix one thing. After creating so many obstacles, 
they will be stacked up in your memory and at some point your application will be crashed so we need to delete them after some time so let's come to the obstacle move object create new function called destroy obstacle and call this function in every frame so i put it in update function inside the function i check the obstacle position and if it is less than minus 5 i will destroy it you need to provide a handy function to delete objects called destroy so let's type an add game object here the game object refers the game object where the script is attached to let's save and go back to unity and let's play obstacles are moving and after passing minus 5 position they are disappeared which means deleted as we wanted then i need to spawn obstacles in random y positions i jump into the prefab spawner code and first create private variable called y position which is equal to 0 and let's replace 0 from y position variable here after every function call i need to add the random value in unity the function we use to get a random value is random dot range so here we using random dot range we can get a random number in between maximum and minimum value here i add minus one and plus one and let's save and play yes now we are getting what we want here if i add minus and plus one we get a random numbers that are integers which means it can be minus one zero or plus one but that's not what i want i need decimals as well so i add f after the number and make it a float let's go back and hit on the play okay now we are getting randomly spawned obstacles in different y positions that's pretty much it for the today's tutorial and see you in the next video soon if you like this video please some thumbs up and if you have doubts please let me know in the comment section to receive my notifications please consider to subscribe and hit the bell button as well so see you soon in the next video